we'll call the meeting to order at, at uh, 604. Um, thanks everyone. Flora said she's going to be a couple minutes late, so hopefully she'll be here before too long. Um, so first, uh, agenda revisions. I have a few. Um, I'm going to suggest that we add an item uh, 2.4 about the um, the Washington Central Unified Union uh, Supervisory District. School District. School District, thank you. Yeah, I couldn't remember what the letters were for that. That's okay. It's enough. Uh, organizational meeting. Uh, I believe Susan Clark is going to be stopping stop by to, to talk with us about that. I'm going to suggest that we add 2.5, which is just uh, briefly discussing and taking a decision about uh, the last day of school this year. And I'm going to suggest that we add 2.6, uh, and essentially an executive session to discuss the staffing issue. Are there any other uh, revisions to the agenda? Okay, are there any, any public comments and correspondence? Andrea, any executive committee comments? Is there a motion to approve the minutes of March 20th, March 27th, and March 28th? So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Any minutes? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes of March 20th, March 27th, and March 28th, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Okay, so we'll go to 2.1. Uh, so we have a contract issue to discuss, and I'm gonna propose that we go into executive session uh, to discuss this contract, and that we would invite Lori Bebo uh, to join members of the executive committee in that conversation. Okay. Um, so, is it, if I could have a motion. I move that we go into executive session to talk about contract or personnel issue. Is uh, it a combination of two, or one more than the other? It's a contract issue. Contract issue. I second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, so we're going to come out of executive session at 6.22. No action taken. Uh, and we will move then to 2.2, uh, which is the uh, Superintendent search uh, looking for a consultant. And we have one of our uh, uh, candidates here, uh, Peter Clark. Would you like Peter to sit here so you can see all of you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, uh, if you just Peter, for one second, I just want to have a, a couple of comments to the executive uh, committee. Uh, my preference would be to try to have as much of this interview as we can in open session. Um, but if we're going to talk about the monetary aspects or if we're going to talk about references specifically, um, and I want to do that in an executive session just to kind of, you know, for Peter's um, privacy. So. Sure. Um, but with that. Peter, I wasn't being, yeah, I wasn't being a good host. I know you were. We really appreciate your uh, coming up. And uh, so I think everyone is aware that Dorothy, Dorothy and I had a chance to meet with uh, Peter already and talk generally about um, what we are looking to do, which is uh, hopefully conduct a search for an interim superintendent for a period of, of one year. Um, so we've had an opportunity to kind of have a little bit of back and forth already. Um, and I don't really have a protocol for how to proceed here. I think that, um, you know, it could be appropriate for uh, maybe to ask Peter to introduce himself and to provide a little bit of an overview of um, you know, his take on some of the things that we discussed, and then we can kind of go uh, from there in terms of asking him questions. Or um, everyone's had a chance, I think, to review your um, your resume at least. Thank you. And we've got about we can take up to thirty minutes um, for this conversation if we if we need to. So. Okay. Um, well. As you saw, I was um, retired uh, about three years ago after 46 years, uh, 10 of them in Montpelier. Um, 
uh, seven of them um, down in Bronxville, New York. Uh, and uh, three of them at, a, um, at an independent school that I was uh, head of that was um, an expeditionary based uh, high school, which was probably one of the most interesting things that I did. Um, the fun expeditionary? I haven't heard that um, before. <laughs> um, it was a school in which students and their teachers spent three months on the, on, on the road. It um, uh, think an educational version of Outward Bound. And so it was a leadership program and um, based on those principles. And Outward Bound came to the United States based on the principles of an educator by the name of Kurt Hahn in the, uh, through Phillips Andover Academy, Josh Miner. And those same principles were the same principles that uh, um, um, uh, are, are the basis of the Peace Corps, and uh, um, and that's where um, Sergeant Shriver went to get. I mean, <laughs> so we're going to send a bunch of American kids over into Africa. You know, they'll be back in two weeks. Okay, and uh, um, so he was looking for a kind of leadership development program, and the Gordonston School in Scotland uh, put those two things together into a holistic uh, educational approach, and the idea was to bring that back. It was very exciting, and it would still be in existence today, only the 90 acres that was chosen by the founder to uh, site the school, the year we needed to expand, we couldn't find a place to perk on 90 acres. <laughs> so I was to say that that idea went, went south, literally and <laughs> figuratively. <laughs> So anyway, it was somewhat of a, a disappointment, but I, but I closed up uh, shop there. And I went back and finished in the classroom um, uh, because that first year um, I wanted to deal with the fiduciary responsibilities and I was pleased that every single investor and uh, everybody that the school owed money to, we were able to make everybody whole and still have money left over from the money that we had raised to um, uh, contribute to um, uh, educational uh, uh, um, uh, nonprofits in the state of Massachusetts, which is one of the things you can do if, if you're a nonprofit when you when you're closing up. And going back into the classroom was, uh, you know, turned out to be, you know, that first year I said, I think I want to keep doing that for a while uh, because uh, I was able to write a lot of curriculum, uh, work with high school kids, uh, develop curriculum and religion, ethics, and and um, world history. And then three years ago, I retired and uh, came back up to Vermont. And um, I happened to meet with Steve Dale, and I said, so what's happening? I want to come back. And he said, well, honey, you should ask. And uh, so there's this major legislature initiative that's going to be um, um, difficult. Um, but um, I think you have a skill set to contribute. And that was based on the work that Brian and I did in Montpelier, which was a uh, um, a lot of strategic planning, a lot of community engagement in order to develop what is now, you know, I apologize to people, Act 77, okay. which is a state mandate, community-based learning, personal learning plans, all of that stuff was all a part of the work that uh, myself, Val Gardner, um, other uh, educators at that time um, were interested in, and we were interested in it. Because when I got to Montpelier, um, even though Montpelier's, and I think a similar profile to U32, um, uh, very high graduation, a very high uh, matriculation rate to college, but also an inordinately high um, uh, dropout rate, which was, I think, 7 to 9 percent, which was almost 35 or 40 kids that never made it. They started as ninth and eighth, never got to the end. And that was just not acceptable to them. To the community wasn't acceptable to me as an educator wasn't and we had to figure out how to do that uh, and so all of those things and I, as i say i apologize to teachers we develop those things in order to keep kids in school now they're a mandate and nobody responds very well <laughs> nobody responds very well to mandates it's much more fun to solve a problem and do so creatively um, but um, they came about in that sense honestly and, and a lot of that work i'm i'm, I'm very proud of so it was that community process work um, that uh, I really loved doing, and I, I wanted that service to be a hallmark of, of what I did as a semi-retired educator. So I dived in. I, I did 12 or more studies. Um, most of them passed. Two of them didn't. They were all difficult in one way or another, helping people find common ground. In some places, we were successful. In other places, we weren't. 
Uh, and then I did three or four alternative studies uh, because those made the most sense to me uh, to work on um, because um, there was an educational argument to be made. And I think three of them were accepted by the state board and one of them uh, was not. Um, and um, so, you know, uh, I wish I could have found help communities find educational and common ground on every single one of them. But some of those were very difficult, and some of the problems were intractable. Um, um, and you, I can go into that more, but this is really about the you know, superintendent search. So, um, so I started my own LLC, and I did that work. I have been mentoring principals in Vermont during the last um, three years, which is incredibly rewarding work and gives me a really good sense of what is happening inside the schools and the challenges uh, that are occurring. And the last piece of work has been curriculum development at the middle school level in, uh, and strategic planning work. A, a lot of, uh, I have a very good sense of, well, if you decide you want to merge and now you have to create this new thing, okay, um, what's, what's that about? What do you have to go through in order to do that? And uh, some of the most important pieces, at least that, that I wrote into the studies that I um, uh, help lead was the importance of the board focusing on cultural and uh, community building efforts um, because uh, as you all know this is a difficult process and so um, continuing to keep a community engaged as you build a, 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 you know or reinforce the vision that the, that the school has um, you know there's an opportunity for a reset but there's also an opportunity to communicate there's an opportunity for people to better understand what the schools were about because they're sort of paying attention because this is all very new so the more you can engage the more inclusive you can create a process the better um, and then the last piece of work i've been doing is nobody's built any schools in vermont for a long time for the very obvious reason that uh, there's been no state aid um, uh, something that um, uh, is a problem uh, and so in one of the places that did decide to merge Slate Valley, um, uh, a lot of the elementary schools do not have critical masses of 7th and 8th graders. And so their program has been contracting at a time when a, a middle school person needs their world to open up. And so Slate Valley, uh, the community really wants to explore the creation of a middle school. And in my lifetime, I again led community-wide processes, one in Montpelier that led to the, the um, uh, renovation of the high school, um, and then four others in the course of, of uh, my lifetime. And I know how to write educational specifications and work with architects. So when you think about all of that experience in terms of the work that's in front of you, you can clearly say, well, he hasn't done a superintendent search. Well, I've been part of a number of them. I know what, it, you know what material is helpful to a candidate. I know that a district has to put together a clear profile of who it is and what it's looking for, even if you're looking for an interim. And you have to try to you know, be clear about what it is you want the interim to do and what it is you don't want the interim to do, because in your particular case, I would say that it's, it's, it's pretty challenging. And clearly, I think one of the things, at least talking with Matt and Dort, is it Matt or Matthew yeah. and Dor Dorothy, is, is clearly you want the, the um, trains to run on time, for lack of a better way of putting it, uh, and someone who is skilled and experienced in, in, in that regard. But it's also happening against a, a backdrop of, of, of change, um, which is going to be hard uh, uh, probably for that person to keep out of in some kind of way. Um, and I did speak a little bit to Matt about uh, the board maybe thinking through what the next year is going to be about and what aspect of that you know transitional year given the uncertainty of, of, of where you lie versus uh, this uh, required merger and the current court case that you're engaged in uh, which is important to the community uh, how to m move forward in that way because one way or the other by 2020 when this person's term is up or when you get to the fact of a new uh, your new superintendent coming on, uh, things are, are going to be different. Um, and uh, the superintendents for whom I have been working with who are leading merger processes, um, trying to keep the trains running on time and uh, do the things that are necessary so that the school is ready to educate kids in whatever form that's going to take in a year, and given that uncertainty, is challenging. And uh, 
So I think it would be worth, even though you're focused on an interim, to try to think about it in the larger context. Because I think the person, when you get to the interview stage, is going to ask, so uh, yes, there's this, but what about this other thing? What, how do I, you know, what are you expecting in terms of this, or how do I navigate, or, and how is the board going to get the support it needs in order to move forward in, in, um, uh, in, in whatever way um, the sort of the fates allow, I guess, in, in some way. So that's a general overview in terms of what I'm thinking. Um, I think what you want is someone who can put together really clear materials, who writes well, who can represent well. I think one of the things that people appreciate it is that I listen extremely well and I can translate that into writing that basically captures what the, uh, what the, uh, the values and uh, the intentions, if you will, of the people for whom I'm uh, facilitating and, and helping to do that. So I'll shut up. Open up for questions, yeah, for people that have. Have we introduced ourselves? We no, that would be fun. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> yeah, let's introduce ourselves. I wonder, yeah, I wonder I'm like, if, there, if there are younger faces that knew me when I was younger and not on this old person, you know, <laughs> that yeah. would, uh, you know. Please don't say, do you, you know, I was in your uh, class or something like that, because that would be at this point extremely embarrassing and it's on television. <laughs> So yeah, let's go. Why don't we start with you? Floor? Let's start with uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm Floor Diaz-Mez. I'm a living East Montpelier. Mm -hmm. I'm on the board at East Montpelier. And I'm an architect. And I'm Kari Bradley. We met earlier on the U32 board. Mm -hmm. And I'm Christine Day from the Romney board. Okay. Okay. Darcy, hello Thank again. You. Nice to see you. Yeah. Did your husband eat all the donuts? Yeah, no, I got my own. <laughs> 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 but he was appreciative. <laughs> I'm Rakeem Cal School Board. Mm -hmm. You are Fraser for our high school board. So, what do you think? What's on your mind? <laughs> you know, I, I'm going to open up just a little bit because I'm really, you know, we're really, we're in a difficult situation, you know, with this transition. We don't know a lot of work, but our communities are also split very heavily. And, and despite of, <clears throat> I mean, the, you know, in a nutshell, you know, there are a lot of very damaging issues that this is causing in our community. And there, these problems aren't going away. So, you know, to some extent, we, you know, we have to, we have to have somebody, somebody you, as you said, that keeps the, the, the train on the rails here. You know, we have to, we don't want to cause a huge amount of disruption in the education through this transition process. And then we also have to have somebody that's kind of not just indoctrinated into, well, this isn't just about education, this is also about health of our community. It's a much bigger thing than just education. And I don't care what anybody says, it, it plays to that. Mm -hmm. And that's what's on the people's minds. So we need the communities themselves over this next year in this transition are going to be, if we're forced, you know, this superintendent, even this temporary superintendent, is going to be a part of this conversation. And I think it's going to be important that they would have the right attitude toward helping to facilitate that conversation, to keep it productive rather than split. And I think that's a really important, a really important person piece in this conversation because this can these communities are not done with this issue. It's, it's too, the, the issues for many of them are too, and they have severe impact. And I think that it's going, you know, we have certainly not reached the peak of public awareness about what's going on. And so that, you know, I think that's the characteristics of this person. I mean, they're going to really have to be good at now, facilitating I, that conversation. Right. I, I, I would agree, Richard. I, I think you're going to be looking for a person that has a level of um, you know, maturity and a capacity to differentiate between themselves and all of the stuff around them, not to, not to personalize. Um, and, um, and someone who's probably not conflict adverse. Um, I mean, if I had, if I had, as a consultant, been conflict adverse, I would not have stepped into Act 46, okay? I wouldn't even have gone down to Bronxville, New York, 
Mm -hmm. um, uh, after 10 years in, Mo in Montpelier and uh, the amount of work that we did, I mean, I was ready to move, but Bronxville had, had seven principles. No, I think it was 10 principles in 12 years almost, or seven in, in 10 or 12 years, um, which was not necessarily a prescription and not something that I would have taken on had I been younger, okay, because I don't think I would have been up to the task. Uh, but I understood, um, you know, once you understand what those are, you know, there are leadership qualities that can help even the most fractious communities come together. So you're, you're, you know, I think the challenge is going to be how big a pool can we get even for, for an interim. And um, for lack of a better way of putting that, I think you're probably going to be looking for someone who um, is certainly not in it for the money and has some sense of, of mission and love of children and love of education that understands not only the, the breadth of what they're facing, but even in the, the, the limitations that go with it, but to, to, to make a contribution. In other words, to make it about the community and not about them. And one of the things that I think sometimes interims do is they're like, they're like me right now in terms of I'm a grandfather, okay? And grandpa, being a grandfather is really great because the, you can love the kids and you can help the kids and you can support the kids, but you go home at night, they're not yours. And I think in that sense, you need, a, um, I don't know, maybe that's too, a, a wise grandmother or a wise grand, grandfather in that sense that is skilled that can, can you know, and, and can help people hear one another um, uh, as, as best they can and who understands the importance of, of community building throughout the process. Even at the best of times, even when we, we did the bond in, in Montpelier, um, you know, that, that was not a slam dunk. Mm -hmm. We wanted to build a new high school, and that didn't happen, and we had to go back to the drawing board. And if we had lost patience, if we did not listen, if we did not understand, then, then nothing would, in that sense, have been gained. And so I think those, those attributes that you're talking about, um, whoever is going to come here is going to know exactly what you just said. And so then the question is, what kind of partnership is this going to be, and how can I contribute? Um, how, can, how can I help, you know, in, in the short time I'm going to be here, you know, make a difference? And sometimes, we, you know, there are people that go into this for the very reason of helping, you know, communities uh, through transitionary times because they're so good. They're so good at it. And there's a great deal of satisfaction that goes with that. Mm -hmm. And that really hits it. That's something that's really needed. And that's just that objective. Yeah. That's along the lines of my question is what what are the what are the opportunities that in the interim status offers us? How can we take advantage of that? Well, I think you're looking for a particular um, kind of, uh, of individual at a certain you know time in their life. I mean, I would not shy away from. The, I mean. First of all, you're not going to be able to hide the notion that this has been a, a rather controversial two or three years, okay? And, and, and um, so I think for the community to basically say, you know, this is the elephant that's in the room and this is, you know, what needs to happen is um, going to be, you know, reassuring um, to, I think, a candidate um, who is at a point in their life where... Um, that's the kind of contribution that they want, they want to make. They, they'd still like to have an impact in their career, um, and, um, they, um, uh, and they're, not, they're not afraid of, 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 of the challenge, and feel, well, if I do this work, I'm not just, you know, I mean, how, this is where I would sell it. I would sell it as, um, you can come here and, and, and make it a, a real difference, okay? Um, that, um, you know, the people are, um, I don't know, the, the, the people are in conflict, um, but helping people through that, I'm never, I mean, for me as an individual, I, I've never been shy about that. That's always, you know, maybe that's the old, you know, Ohio Boy Scout, you know, you walk in and you leave a place a little better than you found it. And maybe you don't saw, after 46 years, I mean, education is not where it is, but where I thought it was going to be. I mean, I thought we could, you know, fix the whole kit and caboodle. Okay? And sometimes I look back in my career and say, you know, I, I, don't, I feel like at times I only moved things 
an inch forward. But I think about the kids for whom that inch was important. Okay? And so what I'm modeling right here is what I hope you're going to hear from the candidates that we could find. Um, and what I think is important in terms of what I can bring to the process is that's what I can articulate this job is about. Mm -hmm. um, because if somebody just wants, I, I mean, there, there may be somebody who wants to do it for the money. I mean, there's always people or, or um, you know, that, that misunderstands the difference between service, which is what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. and, you know, I'm God's gift to education, and this is a mess, and I'm going to come in and fix it. I don't think that's going to serve you very well. Um, because um, you're going to need someone with a real capacity to listen, to mirror, and to bring those things back. And, um, and if we were putting together you know, the profile, I, I would start with what Richard is talking about and try to articulate it in terms of this is, this is an opportunity. This is an opportunity to add to the service if that was important to you. Um, so I think in that sense you're looking for someone that sees education um, in some sense as, as a mission in your life. And there are people that are still out there that for whom that still matters. Hey, what's the, um, I'm going to assume there's going to be a balance if, you, if you're involved in this between guidance and prodding in terms of the search forward. Right. Where do you see that in terms of where, when you need to do which uh, and, and how you do each, because you've had quite a number of leadership positions in school, learning school, uh, and I'm sure you've been on the giving and receiving end of, of that. So how have you developed that? Well, on the, on, the pro, on the prodding end, I think you, you use a network of people that you know, and even people you don't know, um, and um, you know, put together something that allows you to say, here's what this opportunity is, and you know, try to take you know, recommendations. Um, uh, so I, I think putting an ad in the paper isn't really going to be enough. Um, and one of the things that, if you work with me, one of the, I think, strategic things we're going to have to decide is are we going to just look in Vermont or are we going to look outside of Vermont? And if we look outside of Vermont, how are you going to help uh, whoever this person is? It might have all the skills we're talking about, but it doesn't have a clue as to what is, um, you know, what they're, what they're dealing with. And so what is the supports you're going to put in place for that person? And one of the things I suggested to Matthew is, um, um, yes, I can, I can do the focus and I can limit it to, to the notion of finding you an interim. Or perhaps we can use that as a first step in building a larger relationship that says, let's find the interim. Um, but, you know, um, maybe in that process you decide, you, we, you know, we like the, the, the facilitating skills that you're bringing to the table. And so we want you to stay on, not only to help whoever this person is, you know, mentor them and help them with all the things they don't really understand about this process, and also act uh, in service to the to the board in anticipation of the fact that one way or the other you're going to have to do a longer term service as opposed to you get that done and then you find another individual and then you move on. I would not suggest that if uh, if in that initial relationship with me you you know hit a point and saying this person's way out on left field. Okay, so let's just get this part done or and 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 find somebody else in terms of the long term. But if there's the possibility of continuity because of the kinds of ways I'm framing this, um, that can help so that the person is not walking into the line. This is very difficult because they're going to hit the ground running and who's going to support them in that process? And I think the more contextual support, and I think that's where potentially my mentoring skills become extremely important. Because the fine line of mentoring is not telling somebody what to do. Okay particularly an experienced superintendent, but helping them think through. I mean, there are superintendents that I, that I unofficially mentor um, because they need time to, and someone who's sort of neutral just to think about all the things that are on the table right now with these mergers, okay? It, because it's systemically, it's systemically complex even if everybody's happy and not everybody is happy. Even the, even the districts that you think are happy, it's hard. This is really hard work. And so if you're walking in from, let's say, Massachusetts or New York, um, 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 and I think the key there is um, at least to try to find someone 
who, even though they might not necessarily have been from uh, Vermont, at least understands the regional demands. So let me give you a contrasting argument. When, when uh, the superintendent that I worked for in Bronxville left, they ended up bringing someone down from Saratoga, New York, who didn't have a clue as to what Westchester County was about, what Wester County was like, uh, and he was basically a fish out of water. And the board did not provide him any kind of support, and uh, it, it went south pretty quickly. Uh, even, the, the, even though the administrative team um, uh, you know, tried to be as supportive as possible. So it has to be some kind of context for understanding, even if they're, they're not you know, from Vermont. And I think you need to think seriously about what the supports this person is going to need to be successful with you. So that would be the larger, larger piece. But if you, I don't know how big the pool is in Vermont. Uh, and that, you know, you, maybe we don't have to go very far from home to, to, to find the kind of profile of person that we've been talking about. But it's possible that we may, in, in which case. How do we fill that? Yeah, I get it. Right. That is a big issue. I mean, we, yeah. This transition year is a. This isn't just walking into a gap year. This is walking into a major transition within the school system. So the lack. If somebody from out of state is not going to cry, they may not. Be, they're not going to be dialed into. Right. So if you find somebody in state that understands what yeah. this transition is about, we'll fine. Better, yeah. But even so, that person's, in my experience, going to be support. Going to need support. If you have to find someone who is not familiar with what's going on, they're going to even more degree of support. And that's something that, uh, because no one wants to come to a place to fail. So I would think at one stage of the interview, they're going to say, so, you know, this is a pretty big thing you're talking about here. So what are the supports that are going to be in place? And I think uh, even if that, that is a team of, um, um, of, of, you know, kind of the informal support team of board members and a consultant and, you know, some faculty and et cetera, uh, you know, the better off. Uh, but to just simply throw them in and, and I hope they are still around in three months, uh, that would be a mistake. I think you can plan for success um, if you're honest about the challenges that are in front of you. And that's what I would hope I could help you do. So I, I have a... That's why we've got about five minutes. So, okay. we... it, so I don't know if this might be too far deep in, but it, the, the board, as, as the board, we play a big role, right, in creating that culture. And I, I feel this is just a personal feeling. So you know, that I feel like that our leadership team and uh, every school right now does a pretty good job of being that professional learning organization. And they've been working on, and we have as a whole, we have all our student learning outcomes and all this stuff. What role would you play in even just getting what we need for the superintendent in? creating that culture as a, as a board. So we're gonna have to work with the community, we're gonna work, but, but, uh, but as, a, as a board, we need to model the change that we wanna see. So that is a little bit of a challenge uh, right, right now, so that we are all, you know, I think we all, we all care, we are all for kids, and, but, but we, we're in that, at mm. that moment that we really have to you know, decide how how we're going to lead, not that it has to be top down, but if the, the school board is not functioning at a high level, it's, really, it's going to be really hard for that interim person. So would you have any suggestions well, I think, or insight? Uh, I, mean, I, I would think that part of the, part of the charge here mm -hmm. for your uh, facilitator is, could be if they have the skill set, and I believe I do, to th think about uh, board development. Um, because that will make it that, that will make it easier as well. I mean, I I, I don't know exactly where that stands, but um, you know, you know, a rational thing would say, okay, so we're going through this difficult time, okay, um, and maybe some of us want A, and some of us want B, mm -hmm. um, and uh, but we the advantage I think at this point is if you can take a step back, is that. That's been set into motion. And so if, if you can sort of take a step back, um, what's the Buddhist word for it? A little, um, uh, 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 Meditation. To, to, um, I'm thinking just separation, okay? Um, Detachment. Detachment, that's it. And advocate like heck 
for the outcomes that you want. But when we're talking about the day-to-day -day life of the district, which directly impacts the quality of the student's life, can we come together and set that as, as a larger goal? And maybe we need some greater uh, ground rules in terms of how you know, we talk to, with one another and all the rest of that in order to serve that greater good of the kids right now. Uh, understanding that um, I fully expect and appreciate that you are going to um, you know, uh, do whatever it takes given what um, you, you know, you're engaged in because you're looking for this kind of outcome. And that's not easy for human beings to do. Um, but um, I think there are, are skills and ways that, um, in terms of board development, that uh, hopefully we can agree to disagree on some things and understand that the greater good is X and to have honest conversations about that that are facilitated. I have one last question. Sure. What are you reading right now? What am I reading? <laughs> Um, <clears throat> well, I am reading, um, you know, this is like this. Sorry. <laughs> professionally? I'm reading. No, 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 not professionally. No. Anything. No, no, any. Oh, this, no, no, I know how Sarah Palin felt. Because I read a lot. Okay. No, yeah, no, like, you don't. <laughs> 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 and you know she wasn't reading at all, I don't think. But no, I, I have so much on my Kindle right now. You read um, all the newspapers? Yeah, well, you don't need to. No, no, no. It's just like to try to break it up from, you know, usually we try to ask either what, what is your favorite book that is found in interviews or what are, you, what are you most proud of, you know, just to try to get to know you. So get to know you a little bit, not just, you know, because well, ultimately we're all going to be human beings working well, together. So. I read a lot of science fiction. Yeah. I read a lot of, uh, of philosophy. Right now I'm in the middle of Doris Kernswin's book, Whale Next Year, about the Boston Red Sox and having a ball. So. Um, um, and we, we, you know, my wife and I tend to pass Kindles back and forth. Okay, she finishes something, you gotta read this. Um, for example, The Boys in the Boat. Oh, what a great book. If you haven't read The Boys in the Boat, you have to read The Boys in the Boat. So, anyway. I don't, I know that there were nuts and bolts that we didn't get to. Uh, if you want to talk about that later in terms of, of cost, et cetera, that's, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we should at least get a cost study. You know, if we have to be in the executive session or just uh, we can have it, it sure. Have yeah. it um, mm -hmm. just so we have apples to apples. You want to quickly uh, move to move that we go into executive session or contract issue? I'll second. All in favor? All right. Um, Aye. Session at 701 with no action taken. Right. Yeah, no, I'm I'm everybody. Some. It's in the end. Uh, it was a fresh glass. It is fresh glass. Yeah. I just. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've been trained well. The floor is all over it. So I'd like to welcome uh, Mark Andrews. Uh, Hello, everybody. Dorothy yeah. and I had a chance to uh, speak with Mark uh, last week, actually, and then again um, earlier this week. Um, you know, very helpful in kind of helping us think through even how to approach. Um, you know, the, the whole concept of the search. Um, and so we're, we're pleased to, to have you with us today. Uh, maybe we should quickly go around and introduce people that uh, you haven't had a chance to meet yet. Thanks, so Matt. Thank you. We have Flor Diaz-Smith from East Montpelier. It's good to meet you. Nice to meet you. And I'm Carrie Bradley on the U32 board. Hi. Can you speak back from the Romney board? Yes, I can. Dad Naylor from oh, Calus. Dorothy. Nice to see you again. <laughs> Likewise. Mm. Richard Kane from Cows. Here from Berlin. It's an SU board. It's an SU board, yeah. An <laughs> SU executive case. Exactly. Anyway, yeah. Um, so we're going to do as much of uh, this conversation as we can in open session. We, we've talked about keeping two areas if we need for executive session. One is uh, sort of the monetary aspects. Uh -huh. And another would be if we want to discuss your references, and we'll do that in the executive session for privacy of both you and the people sure. that I provided them. Okay. So, but it would be great maybe if you would want to start by introducing yourself and kind of, you know, giving an overview of your thoughts from having talked to me and Dorothy or kind of what you see as being our challenge and, and uh, how to approach it. That'd be great. Well, let's start with the reason it's a good body. The challenges are always going to be there, right? Um, <laughs> but you might be interested in why I'd be interested in this line of work. And, uh, you know, I guess the greatest, um, reason is that I want to continue to contribute to the field. Um, having re 
retired in 2017 as a still vertical superintendent. Um, I still had a lot of life left in me and, uh, and felt that I wanted to continue to be part of this great conversation on how to serve boards in, in the good work that you do. Um, I have allegiance to this, this SU. I'm, I'm a colleague of Bill's and know several members of your leadership team. I live in Lamar County, so I have a sense of the, you know, how it works in a multi-town organization like, like this SU. Um, but I know that this is probably what the most important job that the, the, the board has is hiring as a CEO or a superintendent. And if I could play a role in that in my capacity as a retired superintendent, I would be honored to do that. Um, but I think a particular interest, again, is because of my allegiance to CSU. Um, so that's really the primary reason. Um, I also want to stay current uh, as, a, as a retired superintendent. I'm licensed for another five years as a K-12 principal and as a superintendent. It allows me to stay, again, engaged in, in, in the work, good work that's happening. Because not only am I interfacing with boards and, and ostensibly the community, but I get to spend time with quality educators and, and, uh, and administrators as well in this, in this capacity as a consultant. Mm. And I live in Elmore, so it's close by. Yeah. If this was Bennington, I might, I might be considering. <laughs> <laughs> could, you, could you give us just like a brief, I know everyone's seen your resume, but just a brief kind of overview of your background and kind of maybe how you would propose to approach you know, a search like this. Sure. Well, you've seen, you have seen my resume. Mm -hmm. um, so I came through a non-traditional door. I was never a classroom teacher. I, I worked in mental health for a number of years mm -hmm. and in the private industry. Um, and what's led me to, I guess, if I understand the question, Matthew, um, I really felt the best, the best, the greatest impact I'm going to have as a, as a person, professionally and personally, is to, is to lead. Um, and my, my thesis has always been, it's not how many people follow, but how many, how many leaders I can develop along the way. Um, so I feel that in this capacity as a consultant, whether it be a search consultant or team development or board development, it allows me to. Um, work with staff and with the board and community to to be cliche in power and find your voice to be able to you know, really transcend some some practices that, that need to be addressed and I think your governance model here is an evolving model um, more is left to be determined on in that case and uh, so having we can be part of the work here in this region in Vermont helping boards sort of rethink governance is also something that I think is, lends itself nicely to my interest in leadership. Mm -hmm. that, that all makes yeah. sense? Yeah, great. Thanks. So. And I did start my te teaching career in, in uh, Lamoille County in Hyde Park in a one-room schoolhouse. And oh my, how we've changed uh, in, uh, since 1977. <laughs> <laughs> kids with disabilities were not allowed in the classroom. So I had an old Volkswagen bus, just a little bird walk here. And uh, the only time we were allowed to go to the high school was to for lunch was to uh, was just for lunch and I'd throw them in the van and up we went and now is our thirty minutes of inclusion so we'd come along <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, just, I just prayed that the Volkswagen bus would start before it went. <laughs> parking on a hill yeah <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't manual transmission so Dorothy and I had a chance to speak with you obviously so we want to give a chance for others to ask questions or yeah so. <coughs> how do you think you would approach Engaging again, well, this is what for how would you um, balance prodding and guiding in terms of moving forward on a superintendent search uh, with, the, with the group that you're going to be working with? Yeah, I'd love, I'd love to use the, the latter, thinking that it's more guidance and prodding. But I, what Dorothy and I, Matthew and I talked about, your time is of the essence here. Um, and we've got to be really aggressive coming out of the gate. I mean, I fleshed out a Proposal that I, I emailed to Matthew. I don't know if you have a chance to glance at that. It was also fleshed out of you know what a, a timeline might look like. Dorothy had asked that I do that. It would be presumptuous on my part to bring that forward tonight, but um, you don't have a lot of time. And I think under the ideal circumstances, we would have more time to um, go deeper into some visioning. You know, do we have a consensus? Uh, within the SU board and executive committee on what are the quality, qualities that you're looking for um, in, a, in your next leader um, and to understand what your community thinks about that, not only your parent business and non-parent business community, but also your, um, your, your educators and school leaders. That's really where, that's really where we need to begin. Um, that over here, because it's April 4th, um, you know, mm -hmm. I think that 
um, I would want to present um, what I think is a, a plausible way to approach this. And again, I'm using the word as aggressive because it is. Mm -hmm. uh, we would start on Monday um, next week. Um, I would want to start with the executive committee, you folks, um, and minimally taking a look at what are the minimum qualifications that you'd be looking for in a candidate and what would be the ideal of how do we how do we blend those. But again, we don't have a lot of time to discuss that. That would help to frame what your school spring or what your, your ad is going to look like. I don't think we'd want to put just a boilerplate ad in school spring. I think it needs to be aligned with what your what your beliefs are and what you're looking for. Um, um, so really I try to sequence some activities that all sort of you know um, scaffold um, up to the point where you're going to offer a contract, hopefully by the end of, of, end of May. Um, so getting back to the question of prodding and guiding, um, I'd like to think there's probably a little bit of both. Um, I'm not a really assertive person, but I also know when you, you flip up the, the hourglass, you've got to move on things. Mm -hmm. um, so one of my requests would there be a board liaison um, from this committee that I'd be able to work with. It's much easier to work with a group of um, seven than it is a full supervisory union board. So bravo that your board delegated to you that big responsibility. But I, that said, I still need someone who I can be able to communicate with on a regular basis, as well as one of working with both Bill's um, colleagues here in central office. Um, but I would, I would put that out there and hold us accountable to it. Mm -hmm. You don't have any, you, there's no, there's, you, you can't negotiate that. You have to get it done. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Does that, does that help? Yeah, that's, that's helpful. Thank you. It, would you be committed just to the interim, or would you be interested in continuing with us? And I know that that's not the question in front of us right now, but since as a, you know, to try to start creating that culture, it would be important to have that one person. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it's, it's a fair question, and, and I'm glad you, you raised it. Um, it may not belong here tonight, yeah, but sorry, um, I am, no, 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 I, I'm clearly, as I told Matthew and Dorothy, it's, it's, the, it's the body of work I want to be engaged in doing. Forward. I've taken a year and a half off, and I've done some other things, um, and I'm ready to get back into some, some service. So if, if there was a need in the part of this executive committee or, or your board colleagues, then absolutely, I, I would welcome the invitation to chat about that. Um, there's also what happens if you know you don't if this process doesn't yield a candidate, um, yeah. and I mentioned I think to you guys in my proposal that I can bring it to. To the finish line, and hopefully a candidate's going to emerge. But if not, there's got to be a plan B that the executive committee has. Mm -hmm. uh, uh oh, what do we do now? We shouldn't wait for that uh oh moment. We should start planning that now. And I can again, we can have those conversations, but it's going to be incumbent upon this group to um, to put that plan in place. And your community's going to look for that. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. We thought a little bit about the pros and cons of seeking a permanent versus interim. Yes. Shows interim, but. From your perspective, what, what are the opportunities that we have with the interim status, and, and how can we take advantage of those? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, you have just a, an amazingly strong leadership team here. Um, and I, I, I'm not saying that just because the old man in my left is sitting here. Uh, he's done some really amazing work over the last six years in this SU, um, building that capacity at the leadership team level. So I think the advantage is that you've got a real strong engine and you've got a, a very cogent plan that you have a, sort of a blueprint um, that is leading the team forward. So an interim's not gonna disrupt that. Um, if, if, if you had a, a candidate pool and you went out in December or January of 2019 and you had more viable candidates, then, then a you know, full-time person might make sense um, um, because they've got that time to study it. But as an interim, that, that's off the table. I mean, you'd want to make sure that your, your ad or your interview process is crafted in such a way that you're not asking them to make any significant changes, other than the things that need to happen at the operational level. Um, so I think that that's, that's a strength of an interim. There's not going to be a lot of candidates. Yeah. Um, I can tell you that. Um, when I facilitated the search process <coughs> in the Southwest back in January, we had 22 applicants. Um, uh, I think I brought forward seven. Um, in, in a first round of interviews. Um, so that shows you a lot of people can apply, but they're not meeting you know, the expectations that you will have identified before we, before we start interviewing. Um, 
So that's another advantage of an interim is that you might find someone who just is going to fit that one year role and not have to make a commitment beyond that. And I might be all wrong. There might be people lining up to come over. <laughs> 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 yeah. These are they're very strong communities. You know, they've been for years and years very strong bonds here. This issue is divided. That doesn't mean that strength is not there. It is. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the issue itself. You know, it was very poorly crafted in, in legislation, in my opinion, that, that's really divided not only us but many communities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What would be important, I think, to, from my eyes here, is that so much of this is still in flux. We've got the court case sitting out there. We have the communities. There are certain things they do not want to give up, and they want to structure. I mean, they have to figure out how to structure within this framework mm -hmm. in a way that they can keep some semblance of what they believe in. And so- Are you speaking about the boards? I'm talking about the boards. Yes. So the, the person, the interim person, or, and if that interim person turns into a long term, or, Could be. or every, you know, I think what we're going to need is somebody that can really work with the boards and to some extent keep their hand on that community mm -hmm. pulse a little mm -hmm. bit to help translate those desires and those real concerns into something that's mm -hmm. productive mm -hmm. forward, not ramrod, you know, a, a boilerplate mm -hmm. of any kind. We, I know we're, we're in a position where we've got a, a lot of things that just have to happen to keep this ship from falling, not mm -hmm. falling apart, but mm -hmm. we don't want it to deteriorate. Mm -hmm. we want, but we also want to enable its growth in a healthy way mm -hmm. under the community itself. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm aware very anecdotally on, on some of the struggles that you guys have experienced. It's only through print media that I've been, you know, I've been made aware of that. You know, full disclosure, Bill certainly doesn't just share with me any of that. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I also recognize, and you do as well, it's not one person who's going to change yeah. change things. Uh, it really is a community. Um, that, that's a, it's a great metaphor. Um, you know, you're going to hire someone as an interim. They may or may not have. I mean, we want them to be very aware of Act 46 and sort of the, the dynamics that are at play, but it's not going to be an interim who's going to, is going to move that, that needle forward without the support of, of the board. Hence, I started with, you have to have this bigger conversation about what you're looking for because you don't have the time. Um, recognize that you may not have the right, you might not find that interim that you're really looking for to help support the board. You may need to augment, you might need more capacity around technical assistance. Maybe there are other people in the field along with an interim who can assist in that area. Um, I mean, I've, uh, you know, I've, I've been out of it for, you know, for two years. We helped facilitate the merge between Chittenden Central and Essex Town, which was an amazing amount of work. Um, but it paled in, in terms of how dynamic it was compared to trying to merge multiple boards. Um, so there are people like myself who've had those experiences, but you might find someone who hasn't, um, and therefore there might need to be some some augmentation around that, that level of support boards are not looking for. But I totally understand that, and it's a mo it'll take years to, because there's some repair work that has to happen, mm -hmm. um, that's obvious to me, um, and it's going to take some period of time, more than one year, to, to right that ship. Um, you know, the way I thought about the, if, if whoever, whatever that ad looks like, there are three main components to it. One is you want someone who's got some experience with, you know, managing a, a multi-level tiered variety, you know, soup to nuts organization with fiduciary responsibilities, personnel, um, you know, the operations. Um, that's, that in itself is a huge job, right? And I know that you've got capacity in your central office team to assist with that. The other piece is about how do you support the good leadership um, and good instruction uh, in, in, um, that's happening in, in this district um, already. So you need someone who knows how to work with a real talented team uh, and then help people get stronger um, in that year's period, hopefully. And the third piece is what you're speaking to, Richard, is that it's that, you know, that piece around governance. Um, how do you sort of re-establish trust um, through good communication, competence, um, making sure you're really clear on roles and responsibilities, which also can be a betrayal of trust if it's not clear. Transparency um, in that engagement piece. Um, and, uh, and finally, good creative problem solving. So we have this problem, how are we gonna fix it? So that's, those are the three big components that I see, and that's a big job. Um, and 
again, it's gonna, that person's gonna need your support and, um, and, and his or her ability to, to take that on. I'm not sure what my job is that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring forward to you viable candidates. And and that's, what, yeah, that's what this is about. That's what this is about. And, and it's, it will be your job to decide whether or not they're the ones who can do what you all are looking for them to do. My job is to get them to the table through some, some guidance and maybe some product. <laughs> <laughs> Would you, um, in your role, um, be willing to say there isn't a viable candidate here? Absolutely. Yeah, we don't have time to, yeah, we won't want to bring so much forward who's going to fall flat on your face. No way. No way. I think there's going to be an element of headhunting here. I mean, I, you know, we can put out the, the obligatory, here's the ad, mm -hmm. right? And you're going to get people from a, far away as Kuwait who are going to, you know, who are going to, who are going to apply. Mm -hmm. I'm not kidding you. Um, um, but are they, how viable are they? It's just going to be wait and see. So there's going to be a level of the consultant wanting to get out there and beat some bushes a little bit. Um, I'm sure Peter has, has contacts, I have contacts, Bill has contacts, the VSAs. You know what I mean? There's got to be a little bit of that advocacy and um, assertiveness on the part of the consultant to, to shake it up a little bit. It's not just this passive, let's see mm -hmm. who applies, we've got to be working on it. Yeah. So you have to prod people. There's some prodding there, yeah. yeah. And I think you would, uh, in the proposal, or at least in my, the range of activities need to be engaged, and I, I really would recommend that you have your contract reviewed ahead of time by an attorney, uh, making sure that, um, I'm sure it is, um, commensurate with what you, know, what you have, to have to have in statute, but um, making sure there's some incentives on the table to attract people, um, everything from salary benefits to those sorts of things. But, uh, some sort of review, albeit maybe even cur a curse review, would be prudent. Um, so they're really clear about that. So when people ask the consultant, well, what, you know, what's the contract about? I don't want to be wavering and say, oh, I, I, I got to check with Matthew. You, know, you want to be really clear about that. I think that's a, I'm sure you know that's a no brainer. So we have the, the timing. This is a sort of awkward timing in terms of going out to do a search, mm -hmm. in terms of how. It would typically work when we're going to the sort of educational recruitment of leadership usually happens. Yes. Um, we also have a very short time frame, uh, so those are two big obvious challenges. Are there any other sort of um, sort of pitfalls or or sort of uh, you know potential obstacles? I guess what would be the does anything else come to mind as it could possibly derail or uh, really interfere with our I don't think so, Matthew. I I, I, uh, I wouldn't. Ho I would hope it would not be derailed. I think one obstacle may be people understanding what you're trying to accomplish here. Um, and so, I, as part of my proposal and part of the sequence of activities, there needs to be a, once you have had a couple of meeting, a couple of sessions under your belt to identify, you know, minimum ideal qualifications. You need to start framing what your communique is going to look like with staff soon. Um, first, out um, of respect to them. Uh, and then shortly after that, a communique or using your, you know, your robo uh, messenger service or Facebook or from porch forum, whatever, to let your parent and the, the non-staff community know. So not letting them know, you don't want to keep people in the dark. And there needs to be a real strong rationale on why you're going to interim and not permanent and, and sort of laying out in a you know, what the process is going to look like with some timelines. And again, that builds trust um, that they will have in you as, as, as trustees of the organization that you're doing the right thing for the right reasons. So that, if you didn't do that, and I'm sure you know this, um, that that may lead to some confusion and some mm -hmm. false starts. Mm -hmm. yeah. You'll make it through. I promise you. Oh, we, yeah. you, we won't. you yeah. You've yeah. been down rows bumpy like this before. You'll make it through. Yeah. What do you say? I mean, see, it's the strengths. I mean, the, you know, from my perspective, and having lived in Calus for over 20 years now, mm -hmm. and, you know, I see these communities actually bound very tightly. This has been divisive. Mm -hmm. Act 46. It's, sure. And it's, yeah. you know, it's a problem with the way it was constructed. Yeah. And it's flawed. But um, that, I mean, I, what strengths do you see? I would see this as actually being. And you know, a positive for people. You know, this has been a strong district for a long time, mm -hmm. yeah. or a group of districts, mm -hmm. and uh, 
Um, this is the this, 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 this issue in a lot of places. It is. So um, I would, I would, how, how would you portray that how, as, as an attractive position place to be? Yeah, I mean, I think for some people it would be it would be a reason why they would want to take that job mm -hmm. on. Um, and it's more than just listening. Um, I think it starts with listening and hearing the story. Mm -hmm. um, you know what. Anybody you brought to the table, I brought to the table for your consideration, would have to have that background knowledge about how divisive it has been, and, and that it's not a, a, you know, unanimous that this was the best piece of policy that came out of Montpelier. Um, but I do think some people would be attracted to the opportunity to work with local communities in that regard, outside of you know policy issues that you have to work on notwithstanding. But how do you get to know your community even as an interim? On uh, hear what those stories are and to start rebuilding. Um, I think people would be. There are people who are really good at that. Um, whether or not they also want to be a superintendent and take all the other stuff on, I'm not certain. Um, but I know there are some great community leaders, and I see Bill um, as not just a superintendent, but as a community leader. Um, and, and I hope, and I know that superintendents become lightning rods for some of this work. It's not our fault. <laughs> you know, I mean, we're just trying to follow the law and do what's right. You know, have we communicated and engaged enough leading up to decisions that we have to make sometimes we haven't had the privilege, you know, that time. But I, I do believe the superintendent, whoever it is, it's an interim basis, would want to work with you in terms of what does that engagement look like. Mm -hmm. um, and it may take more than just the superintendent. Um, I said that before. It might be other people who can do some community building um, with the community of Calais um, to get a sense of where have you been and where do you want to be. And we, at some point, we would be totally candid, we have to get over it. Yeah. Right? At some point, by fiat, someone's going to say, this is what you need to do. Well, that's not really the case. It was probably going to happen is that, that this whole system was going to work because it probably will fail someone on some levels. Mm -hmm. As foreseeable, it's done in other states. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, so this be. is going to be a learning process and it's going to morph in both, both directions. And I think that's what's important in the end is the outcome mm -hmm. for the kids in the communities to right. make sure that it doesn't, that we end up with healthy communities. Yeah. And, in a broad sense, and yeah. so that's what you know. I expect, and it's one thing I've seen within education is there's a blindness to the to the bigger issue of community mm -hmm. health. Sometimes mm -hmm. it gets so caught up in its own little world that, that sometimes yeah. the, the surgeon is killing the patient. Yeah. So I think we, you know, moving forward, maybe this is less of an issue for less of an issue for our interim, but if it's something that carries forward, we want to have that vision. Mm -hmm. where an open vision of where mm -hmm. we need to go, what really is best. Mm -hmm. Not what we're being forced into, but yeah. how yeah. how do we continue to mold this forward? Yeah, and if there are, and you're right, you just said what needed to be said, it's an interim position. Uh, now keep in mind, there might be people who come to the table who you think, boy, I wonder if you'd be interested in a full-time job. There, there might be mm -hmm. that person. So you always have to be thinking that. long ball, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but there's going to always be some I guess is I'm just being pragmatic. You know, there's going to be right. some constraints around what you can and cannot do, and I think the, the superintendent needs to work within those constraints, but also mm -hmm. know how to bend, bend things, bend that line, so you can meet the needs of the folks in Dallas, and most importantly, the kids. Um, mm -hmm. And again, so I'm out of my it's out of my wheelhouse. I mean, that's that's not anything I've really experienced, but I think there are people out there that could would fit the bill. So, so we've got a couple of minutes. I just want to ask if. Um, the stuff that Mark has already shared is sufficient for the committee to consider regarding the monetary side? Yes, yes. Side? yes. I think yeah. so. so we unless, unless there's any nuance on that, on what you've already presented. I, I have shared the sort of outline of the okay. proposal that you the what I sent you? Yeah, 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 yeah. I hope so. I wasn't being presumptuous. No, I don't no, no, need no. to jump off some of this. No, there's no nuance. It's just straight up, um, yeah, okay. gas money. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I don't know if that's competitive. I'm going to get to the So I, I have a question, Mark. If if you once you talk to the leadership team and get a better sense of who we are, it, you know, I see this process also as an educational opportunity for all of us. So if if you came to the conclusion that we needed a little bit more board development, I think, and to yeah, do the same with the, the communities, you <coughs> would be willing to bring that up and say, you know hire an interim, but you should also be doing some, some, you know, some board, board, board development yeah. or some education around yeah. what, you know, If that's a request that this committee made, then I'd be more than happy in a judicious way to say, here's what some things you might want to think about. There's also other, 
there are other great resources in the state and in this region that could help support good governance and good practice at the board level. Um, and it's something that if you're already operating at a high level, I would always want to check your assumptions on that because, again, it's going to be a new new landscape. We want to make sure everyone has the types of requisite skills and under predispositions going into this this work. Yes. Um, but I'd be more than happy to offer some, some observations um, if that would be helpful. Yeah, so the idea being process. that we can be better support the interim person yeah. or, you know, like... That's what this is about, right? This is yeah. what, so that yeah. it, it also starts with us, so that mm -hmm. we can all right. start working yeah. on that. I agree. I, I would meet with um, the leadership team, again, very soon, and the central office team. I think it's important to, to recognize both both groups of both teams are really, really integral. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's important to meet with them separately, even though there might be some overlap. Um, um, I also think it's important to meet with faculty, but we don't have the time to do that. Um, so. Last question. What are you most proud of? In my, in, in what way? Just. Or what would you say is the company? Personally or uh, professionally? I've had a great career. I mean, I started in 77 in a one room schoolhouse. and. Uh, other than a short stint doing some private work outside of Boston, I, uh, I'm very proud of um, you know what I've accomplished and being able to work with people and get people to be able to be, have people see a, a bigger, brighter, better future. Um, I tend not to focus on what doesn't work right in the world. I tend to focus on the things that we should be happy and celebrate about, and, and use those assets to build a stronger community of care. And I think I've done that um, as a practitioner, but also as a superintendent. We should both play in the bus right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was that was that was that was, that was a sixty. Yeah, I just I just you sold, sold a, I just I just sold the Westphalia last oh, year. Did you? Yeah, did you? yeah. I took it out west and I came home and I said, Ah, man, I don't know, a little bit too risky. So uh, I sold it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I saw it on the side of his driveway one day driving home. Like, what's he doing? Getting rid of that thing? I actually <laughs> asked him. I said, What are you doing? Yeah, yeah. Well. We're on the right side of the mess, they say. I wish you guys well. Yeah. And uh, if, if I'm not the chosen consultant, please know. I, I don't personalize it at all. You'll make the right decision. And uh, if I am uh, selected, I'd be more than, than, uh, more than honored to serve you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. Yeah, nice you. <laughs> Let me take care of my water. Oh, <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> Good night. See you later. Good night, Good night Bill. Can I? Thank you. Yeah, I'll just walk out. I'm going to suggest that we take maybe like a two or three minute recess. Who has Susan at 730? What's that? Did you say Susan at 730? I'm not sure she's here yet, but that Good, would be okay. time she would expect any comment. Okay. Yeah, so, if people want to use the restroom or grab okay, some water. Or, yeah. So, we'll come back from our recess at 636. Seven. Seven? Seven. All right, fair enough. <laughs> no, 7.30. 7.30. 7.30. I'm like 6, it's 19.30. Yeah, sorry, I was yeah. trying to pretend it was earlier than it is, yeah. That's, 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 that's due time, that's 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 yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'll mean, i suggest that we table our um, you know, discussion item around the uh, superintendent search consultant, and we'll move to uh, 2.4, uh, since Sue Clark has kindly joined us. Talk a little bit about the organizational oh, meeting. Oh, 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 sure. Yeah, I'll yeah. get to you. Oh, you guys get a copy. Of the We're going to get a copy of the warning. So you, can have the, you asked me to do that, and I totally forgot. And uh, I actually, so I, my understanding is that this kind of came about sort of in a conversation between the two of us. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure. I can guess kind of what you wanted to come talk about, but I won't guess. So I'll let you actually <laughs> say it yourself. So. Um, well, I wanted to just walk through the warning and see if there's anything that, well, I mean, some of these articles obviously are things that um, aren't just yes or no, you, they take embellishment, you know, to establish, you know. A, 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 so I wanted to just check and make sure that there's, you know, preparation, you know, for content and, you know, obviously stuff might come from the floor as well. Um, I wanted to touch base on the, um, well, first of all, Bill and I walked around the, the space um, uh, at the auditorium and the, and the gym, um, and maybe you talked about this already, but... We, no, I mean, we never oh, okay. talked about it at all. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah and we sort of talked about the merits of the two spaces, um, and, you know, there are pluses and minuses to both of them, and finally I just decided to pass the buck and ask the town clerks if they had any opinion, and they all unanimously wanted um, to stay in the auditorium. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, 
that they said they felt that it was, because we were wondering, geez, they didn't have way more room to spread out in the gym. You know, more room for the polling, which kind of got congested. Okay. Um, but they thought that the reason that it got congested was because they had placed the ballot box in the wrong place. And, um, but they liked the fact that the gym was comfortable. They liked um, the fact that people could see each other. Um, they worried, as did I, about the lighting mm -hmm. because it's hard to see from the front of the room. Um, and Bill and I played with the lighting a bit. And it's if you turn down, there's certain lights that, and, I mean, the room is intended to be able to see the stage, which is not what we want. We want the reverse. And if you turn down the stage lighting and turn up the lighting in the hall, I think it actually works really well. And we talked about moving the podium to that. Yeah, we're going to put you up on the stage yes. as a yeah. podium. But yeah. there's a whole new sound system and podium system in there since yeah. we were oh, yeah. They've so been it's replacing actually, the sound system. Technically, I think it's not going to be presiding officer. It's going to be God. The sound. Yeah. God. Just God. <laughs> it's the sound. is like, I, 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 I. No. <laughs> Yeah, so it's good. Two uh, roving microphones so that people can um, go around. Yeah, go around and you can have more, a little, gives them other air, maybe a, a little more control too about, you know, alternating, you know, space. So it, it isn't always the same folks at the microphone. So. You know, in terms of the town of clerks, if, if it's going to be in the auditorium, is there any sense of actually splitting them to different parts of the auditorium? Because having them all, mm -hmm. you know, everyone was going there as opposed to mm -hmm. different parts of the auditorium, yeah. different sides of the yeah. auditorium. Yeah, they did have some thoughts about that. Um, and so they, I, I, what I basically said to them was, do what you want. Yep. You know the space, and you are the election officers, and make it work the way, you know, we, and Bill, I know, sent them an email and just said, let us know what you want. Mm -hmm. um, did, so they, did they mention just doing it on the stage? But I do that behind a curtain, you could do it. Open a curtain, you could. I mean, that's you know, that's open space. Why it's, it's uh, you know. It, 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 it would, would um, involve everybody going um, up the hallway, up stages, going through the work stairs. backstage to Yeah, work. upstairs. It? Yeah. You have to get out upstairs. You have yeah. to get out yeah. to do okay. the handicap bars. It's not an easy way to do it. No. I, I just hand you the. February 19th. I couldn't quickly find the one that's published for this time. I could probably got online, but this you, you remember that we're starting at item three right now. So exactly. yeah. So and I think the acoustics are better in the auditorium as well. So given that they there was like maybe we had no questions that they wanted in the auditorium, um, and we were kind of saying or think we're going with the auditorium. I think the only thing I asked for is if we get a few smaller tape. Not quite as big tables for the check-in. That's something I've received so far. Oh, they asked you that. Yeah, they said you have some five or six foot tables instead of eight foot tables. We were kind of congested and okay. reorder it a little bit. Yeah, okay. yeah, they we wanted to that. move the towns and that. Yeah, <clears throat> towns around a little bit. Okay. So I think they know what they're doing. Um, I um, would like to. I, I'm not sure if this is going to work. What I would like to do. The first order of business is to elect a moderator, um, and I was very honored to serve as um, the temporary presiding officer, I felt really badly about the way that un un unrolled. I felt really bad about Paul. I called him the next day and we just, you know, it's not how we should treat our moderators. Um, and um, it, anyway, that was really unfortunate. I was glad to serve uh, it because it seemed like it was necessary. What I would love to do is to suggest that maybe Gus Selig would be a great moderator um, for the to be elected for this spot. Um, number one, because he's a school moderator. <laughs> I'm a town moderator, and I haven't been a school moderator before. Gus um, has experience as a school moderator. Um, and I also just kind of think it's not best practice. I mean, I know it's not best practice to have somebody who's been outspoken on an issue be moderating the meeting. Um, and um, Gus hasn't been, and I have been. I mean, I, I feel like I can do it, and I feel like I had the trust of the group um, and so I, I felt comfortable, but I don't think it's best practice. So if Gus is willing, that's that's what I'd like to suggest, and I wanted to let you know that and see if anybody. Had, I think he's super well respected. He's been the executive director of the Vermont Housing and Conservation Board for 30 years. He's, he knows the kind of content that we're talking about here. I think he's well known in the five towns, and he's the. He's the really we even, we even asked him if he'd be available. I asked him, and he said, "Yeah, probably." <coughs> He hasn't said yes yet. He said, yeah, probably. So I was trying to get him before uh, this meeting. Um, so if he won't, then. So the question would be, if, so we're doing that, shouldn't we 
give the option to the community, you know, like so that they don't feel like we're like, yeah. putting somebody in. So give the same opportunity to, to Paul Hanlon and to, or, you know, or maybe not Paul, but so that we're not again putting the community in a position that my, we're. My guess would be that Paul is probably not going to try to do it again. Oh no, I'm um, surprised he would. Be but but you're willing. to you're sort of raising a, a question, which I think is an important one, which is that you know. Um, we obviously have an interest in supporting this meeting with all yeah. these logistics and community talking about how we can try to ensure that it goes well for the voters. But it's not our job to run the meeting in any way. We don't have any authority there. Mm -hmm. We don't. Yeah. It's not our meeting to. It's not our meeting. You know. They're going to elect so. who they want. <coughs> it yeah. seemed to me mm -hmm. to make sense to look at our resources of our town and school moderators. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, all right. Well, there's Michael Duane. There's Susan Clark, there's Gus Selig, there's Paul Gillis, who is actually, um, you know, uh, one of the lawyers on the Huntington mm -hmm. uh, Act 46 um, lawsuit. Um, and who am I missing? Paul. Mm -hmm. So of those five, Gus seemed like the, uh, 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 the likely suspect to me. Um, and he was at the last meeting and, you know, talked to him afterwards. Yeah, kind of. He's a very, very good moderator. If you, if you nominated him, I think that that would just that sure. would be a way to do it. But well, well, you'll be presiding though at the beginning, right? Yeah, so that's I'm probably not better if I'm not. If I don't do oh, it's it, it's better if you don't. I so who would be presiding then? I am the temporary presiding officer, and if there are any shenanigans like there were last time, I would be handling them. <laughs> meaning, meaning uh, before um, the first article comes out. But the first article is to elect a moderator. Right. Okay. Um, I'm just so, saying, like you can't nominate people yourself because you'll be mm -hmm. designing oh, design, 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 design. yeah, design. yeah. 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 That, right. that's, so, yeah. that's what I was I mean usually I don't so know about us, your one of, us, usually one of us could nominate Gus but, yeah or but somebody else could if he's there, there and so <laughs> would you smooth out with Gus that someone else because someone else may nominate you and then we would kind of be in the same position with who was that could happen I I would what I would you probably say is, it, I mean, first of all, I just kind of wanted to talk to you to see if anybody was like, Gus, see, like, I hate that guy. You know, oh, because, no. <laughs> um, you know, if the, if That's because what we do here. <laughs> 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 um, he's, it seemed like a, a good choice to, to me, um, but I just thought I would start here. Um, well, I started with Gus, actually. But, um, and uh, then, I mean, I think that if I were going to do this, what I would say is, you know, the first order of business is to elect a moderator, and I am not running for that position. Okay. Um, so just, okay. Um, so, um, at the last meeting, <coughs> who nominated Paul Hanlon? I did, I think. Matthew yeah, David? Yeah, pretty sure, yeah. 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 So, what about you nominating Gus? No, that didn't go well. I don't think so. <laughs> no, I just like. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be try to be as, you as be inaudible as possible. possible okay, you're gonna be up in the back corner. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm glad to do it, but it, I, I'm polarizing enough as it is. Yeah, I mean, I'm, <laughs> we need to find. Compared like a Vera or somebody like that, that, that a Vera. No, I don't mean that. As, I don't mean that as an insult. But, uh, <laughs> it's not. Uh, I mean, Gus is wonderful as a moderator. I, I, well, yeah, I've talked to people in the house who's just there. Just, he's, maybe, he's calm. I'm trying to think yeah, of he knows I, I mean, I can find course. somebody. I don't. It's not really a problem if you. If you. It, it, I, I. I mean, I don't want you to. You would find time. somebody to nominate Gus, you said? Yeah. yeah. I yeah. Ask yeah. Yeah. If you, well, I think, too, in that, yeah, I mean, it's not a problem with five people nominate him. I mean, in that house, I mean, the, the reason that was so nasty, there was old stuff in there. There's a lot was, of distrust in that room. That was distrust, exactly. And that, and so. How that's done is really important. That if it's done correctly, that will mm -hmm. people will evaporate. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm a little confused. Why do we have to elect the moderator again? Right. Yeah. Weird. <laughs> if you look at the agenda, <laughs> what we did last time was we we elected a temporary presiding officer. Mm -hmm. That was me, and that person was only going to be presiding yeah. until the, um, we <coughs> elected the moderator. And we never got that far. And we, we didn't get, get that far. Exactly. So it was a temp it was just a temporary little two and a half hour job. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. it, you know, we have we adopted Robert's rules. And, yeah. um, I mean, there isn't any reason that I could could not. I could do it is what I'm trying to say. 
uh, and if Gus doesn't want to do it, I can, if you guys want me to. Um, I, I prefer not to. Okay, you're going to have to be moderator. So oh, remember, this is, for, this is for the year. And right, so. right. Yeah. Okay, so. yeah, this is for it. Yeah, so, yeah. Do we have right now Mary Woodsburg? Is that like I don't know? Not, not as a moderator. Up. Not, not as a moderator. Okay. We'll, we'll get to those next okay. two pieces. But. Yeah. Um, so, so, so I think it sounds, I mean, I. Yeah. I don't know Gus, but it sounds fine. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have any problem with it, and I, but I don't know who to suggest. Right. I, I, I so don't anybody here can make the motion. I, I will not. But well, somebody you find somebody. Me. I will. Okay. But if you find somebody else. Then. Okay. Do you know Gus? No. Okay. Uh, all I want to say is that when Gus takes the podium in Calus, he talks a lot about how it's our meeting. He wants to make it to go our way. He wants it to be fair. You know, I hear from this person and that person before you can come back again, kind of thing. Um, the usual stuff that moderators go, but he he has a presence about him, and the way he expresses that, it's very, um, I want to say calming. Um, he has lost his temper once or twice. Um, but, you know, other than that, I think he, he would be, be very good. And making sure it was a fair meeting and we accomplished what the audience wants to accomplish. Okay. Um, good. Well, I want to see if we can get it. Um, then if you come up with any other ideas in the meantime, let me know. Like, did, did you want to go over these articles? Yes. yes. Um, so it, you have suggest the first article it, um, is the moderator. What we just talked about, clerk treasurer. It sounds like you have somebody in mind. Mary, 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 Mary. Yeah. I know you had talked okay. to Laura. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Very comfortable. Okay. Yes, she yeah. does. Yeah. She does it for Calus and U32 in Washington okay. Central. Mm -hmm. Do you, and does somebody, do you guys have a suggested date and location for the formal meeting of the district? So to make a, to make a timeline, it, to, if we need to go all the way to a budget vote before July 1st, we need to have an election on May 21st. On or by? Uh, on. To, because there's six Mondays we have to have in a row here if we if they decide to go Australian ballot. So that to have that six Mondays, that would get us to May, um, May 20th, and then the 21st we would have an election, and literally the warning to be able to be, for a budget to be voted on, which would be June 25th, needs to be posted by the 24th of May, that Friday. Okay, so May 21st, 2019. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> um, so. And, and I, should I, I'm just going to ask the, the Executive Committee should resend out that timeline that I had sent that had that on there. Right, I had it. Yeah, yeah. it would be good just to do it. it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then you. Yeah, that's the same <clears> that everyone votes for a, a, a Australian ballot. If it is an Australian, we can actually back it up some because then it's just a thirty to forty day notice. It's the six Mondays that give us that far out to the twenty first because we have to have six Mondays for an Australian ballot, and it only gives. Us Basically, this week for people to do petitions. No, between the 8th and the 15th, you do petitions. Mm -hmm. it's very and fast. so, this is um, for the first annual meeting and all subsequent annual meetings. So, this one, if you're, you're suggesting that somebody would move that it would be May 21st, all subsequent, would it would be my, um, Saturday or what do you have that kind of? My recommendation would be town meeting. That's what we've been doing. It can be moved town again meeting. later if we decide something else. but. Been the tradition around here that school meeting happens on town meeting. Right. <coughs> so that would be the motion. Whoever makes the motion. But this is oh, the wait, first. Oh, this is minute. the first annual meeting. Right. And, 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 and all also and subsequent. I see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so the first be, annual would be May twenty first, and then all subsequent would be town meeting day, basically. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, that would be the motion. That's right. That, that, well, that would have to be phrased that way, though. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So are well, we? Uh, just so I can be clear, yeah. it seems like you want to go through this to see if there are people in the room who can be lined up to make these motions. I, that that, I'm not fussy. I mean, I just want to be clear that this, <clears throat> I, I would be sad if this agenda 
it, it wasn't obvious to me. Um, some of these articles, you read it, and it definitely needs more information. Right. You can't just stand up and say, so moved. Right, right. And that, that's all I'm doing, it's just yeah, raising my flag. I have a question about the annual meeting being at Covington. Mm -hmm. If the annual meeting is actual meeting, how are people going to... Right, so that, that, that's, why we do that, that's, that, that's what you have to decide if it's going to be. And so one of the things that was suggested at the last time was that you actually move that question to after you know whether you're doing things by Australian ballot. Oh, that, that makes more sense. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what yeah. we had talked about back in January, yeah. was that you actually have four, and you ask the moderator that yeah. we'd like to move that until we know, because mm -hmm. how you vote on the Australian piece mm -hmm. will tell right. you whether you want on town meeting day or not. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's easy to do. Well, it, it, it is, but there's a specific way of doing that that might sound alarming to people, because the, actual way to do that is to move to suspend the normal rules of order in order to move item six to position four or something along those lines. Yeah, that's what, what you do. You suspend the rules and what you can do, you can just do it by what doesn't sound um, alarming is if you say, um, unless there's an objection, what I'd like to do is reorder this agenda. And that's unanimous consent, which okay. is how you suspend the rules secretly. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's the moderator's best friend. Um, so, unless there's, there's an objection, I'd like to suggest that we move Article 2 to become Article... Article 5, Article 6. Article, 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 article 6 become, become Article 4. And maybe just Sorry. give a brief explanation mm -hmm. of why we might yeah, have that. Yeah, and explain that, why. Do you say Article 4, 5 and 6, Matthew? Or 5? Um, I think you should do 5 and 6. 5 and 6. Last time we talked about yeah, this. And 5 and 6 will become 4 and 5. Yeah. Okay. That, that 4 really becomes oh, after... Six. Oh, right. Sorry. It's, uh, so it's these two uh, to determine whether to vote on the district's budget and all their public questions by Australian ballot. So just basically reverse these. That would be four. That's then, no. This would be four. This would be five, five. and then this would become six. Right. So, so just so you know, two, you guys really have back to one. Yeah, and you guys actually, your numbers uh, are not. Oh yeah, yeah. We have an old one. So that's one. So. Um, so that I guess. I guess then, so then this would be two. Make one. Australian ballot. This is one. Right? Yeah, this that's one. one. Mm -hmm. So then whether to vote on the district budget and all their public questions by Australian ballot would be two. Two. Okay. And then to determine whether to elect members of the district board by Australian ballot would be three. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this and other one, the date, date would, be would be yeah, four. Okay. Yeah, and that, and Dorothy, what you were saying about do you want on town meeting, it also will be able to tell you whether you need six. Mondays or not, because right. if you're going to Australia, you need six Mondays. But if right. you don't, you can move things up and give more time for Australia for the budget piece later on. You won't be because right now the the six um, Mondays is what's really <coughs> cramping our timeline to get something done before July first for our budget. Right. So it buys it buys us time if if we're, we're only within thirty Australia. days. It's like thirty or thirty nine yeah. days with a so you have a little bit of time. Yeah, I think you gain almost a week. Yeah, so. Okay. So is there someone willing to, is there someone in this room who just followed that conversation is willing yeah. to do that, actually, because... To, to, to move there, not to just say the dates, so to move there. So without objection, I'd like to reorder the agenda so that, you know, these items are two and three. Oh, I'm, I'm happy to do that. Yeah. And you don't have to that. say without objection, that can be the moderator. You can yeah. just say, I'd like to move that we, that we move articles yeah. to two and three. Then you would speak to Gus about the intent behind yeah. that, or no intent? Yeah. Right. yeah. And if, they, if, if people are funky and somebody says they object, then you just have to have a vote. It's a, it's a vote to assist under rules. Uh -huh. And it, uh, it, that has to pass by two thirds. So. so, would you be doing this though if it's Gus? I'm sorry? Is yes. Gus the first line of business? Gus yeah. is the first line of business. So, so if, 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 if Gus says yes, and is elected, Gus would have to run this. Mm -hmm. but, but I'll tell them all about it. Okay. It's not, that, that's pretty, that's not scary. That's yeah. not scary. To, to this you should be ordering <laughs> for somebody, for a moderator. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you very sure. Not for the moderator. <laughs> no, those, those things aren't scary. Um, those aren't hard, I don't think. Um, <clears throat> one last way. I, I think the best way to do it would be instead of say two or three, is just to actually read where we were moving up or just say the number. 
Oh, move, move you, using the numbers of the articles when you make Don't them. say what they are. And I'm just yeah. clarifying. Mm -hmm. I just, because what I think most people would, I don't want to make it confusing, and I think most people would want to know what that's the proposal right. to move. And it's, right, and, and In, explain why. Explain why. Yeah. Mm -hmm. sure. yeah. So I just want to, so it is coming up to 8 o'clock, which is the warrant end of this meeting. Yeah. Um, we have not gotten to about half of our agenda. Okay. So I just want to check with the committee. Yeah. It seems like we're going to go late, possibly yeah. an hour, hopefully not more than an hour. But <coughs> up to an hour so. I need to leave at 820. You need to leave at 820, okay. Yeah. Um, the, the thing that I um, <coughs> wanted to do was just make sure that you know that if you sort of read through each of these articles, some of them are going to require somebody to make a motion that's more than just so moved. And so, so, so can we do that, though? Uh, can we? Do we have to move to amend the article to include the language before? It's like filling no, in a blank, no. or like no, right. it, yeah, it's more. So like yeah, compensation for board officers, you'd say like I move that we compensate board officers at a rate of thousand yeah. dollars per year or yeah. something, whatever it is, like okay. You know. okay. So that's yeah, and that's all. It, it just means it yeah. just means you know somebody needs to have at least a starting place. Right. Of okay. motion. Yeah. And so we don't have to go through this now. If you've got other things that you'd rather do, it's I don't just mind doing it. I just wanted to just check with the group that just a noting that we're going to go past our schedule time. Okay. It's okay. If you have other things. Yeah. I, just, I mean, the the other, other ones that looked like um, those kinds of articles to me were to determine and approve compensation. Um, um, there are two of those. And so somebody's going to need to say, I vote that, you know, I, I move that we and have an amount in mind for, for those two. And we do uh, have, we we do have this yeah. sheet that we can pass around, which sort of, yeah, we've talked before about compensating board members. Um, mm -hmm. But this is kind of, I think, what Mary currently gets for being treasurer. It's board. about, it's about, it's a total of what, what the three do, they come up to for clerk and treasurer. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that one yes. of the things that, oh, I forgot to mention this, but one of the things that we talked about was <clears throat> um, how, how useful it would be to have a um, PowerPoint ability. Um, it would have been really helpful when we were doing um, amendments last time, when people kept on asking you to read the amendment, you know, and, and it's just, I, I wouldn't want to have it on all the time, but if somebody has a propo proposed wording for an amendment, or in this case, you know, for a compensation wording for any of these articles, it'd be nice to be able to project it and say, okay, so this is my motion. And then people can actually read the motion um, when it's you know, when it's not what's on their warning. Um, so, and there was some kind of somebody there who was going to- Yeah, we're still working on getting um, that person. Yeah. There's um, not a lot of takers right now. No? No. People are like, I don't want that <laughs> job. So, still working on it. Um, a clerical. I mean, seriously. Yeah. I know. I know that. I know. I tried to take it very seriously. I think it's a really good idea. I'm just saying. Yeah. I've no, asked I, a few folks, so I'm going to keep asking. Um, I I I mentioned this earlier, and I know you didn't think it was a great idea. I really like the idea of using students for these kinds of jobs. What? You like using students? students? I I, yeah. I know that it feels like oh they've got schoolwork to do. I, I think it's super educational. Right. Right. Um, okay. And you know if you have somebody who's a high achieving student who's willing to spend you know a couple hours, it's it's a you know and all, all we're asking them to do is you know here's my word and can you type this? Um, they're all better at typing than any of us. Um, so anyway, just a just a thought. Um, we we always have uh, mm -hmm. in middle school. We always have kids carrying microphones at town meeting. Um, I love just, that idea. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I was really disappointed when we didn't we didn't have any this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's hard to get them. They're busy, uh, and and it maybe not a great idea. But, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe yeah. maybe Lucy can do it. Hmm? Maybe Lucy can do it. Lucy would. We could ask her. I was thinking, she actually read our civil education at our yeah, and That's what I was thinking about. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, maybe mm -hmm. I should have to read a civil education at this one. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, a typist would be great. And so yeah, those, those two about compensation and then to establish provisions for the payment of any, you know, I think we'll have to figure out what provisions. 
This body is going to establish. Right here, kind of. This is number. Number. This one is number nine. Yeah, the established provision for payment. Uh, well, that's actually new, but it's very similar because it is establishing not only for before the fiscal year, but continue on to provide for uh, in lieu of taxes. Well, actually, that, that's number 10 on the one we're looking at, so it would be. Right. Um, but the provisions piece is that's new, that's new because of the merging of this district of expenses, and we already have expenses going on, and how do you pay for those? So what do you budget? think, the, if, a, if you were going to move that article, Bill, which I knew you aren't, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to touch anything. You're touching anything on here. What would a person who wanted to move this article say? I, I move to, to to have it out of uh, one balance of the SU uh, because that is a jointly contributed to. So we've been checking with our auditor if that's yeah. actually legal. Chris Leopold does not think it is. Yeah. You'll have to call Chris. I okay. just. So um, what other source would there be that would? You ha you would what you do is basically saying that. You, you, because the next one is about taking out borrowing money ahead mm -hmm. of time. Right. So that's where the money's going to come from. That's the source, Chris. This is saying yeah, that. Well, then that could be first. Before I was going to say, should so we the rearrange provision. these? Sure. Just have a source. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's. Rearrange them in what way? Yeah, that's well, so that you're establishing the ability to borrow money before you spend providing a provision for <coughs> spending money. No, it's kind of moot. I mean, it's so. So, what are those numbers you'd like to reverse? Uh, I guess that's to right. establish seven position. Eight. What number seven is that? Eight, seven eight. Yeah. Is that seven? Either that, or you can make seven, seven contingent upon eight passing. I think it makes sense to reverse that. Yeah. Um, so that would be another. So would that have to be part of the first part? Can we just have a second motion? I would, I would, is that what you mean? Yeah, I would have a, yeah, okay. have a second yeah, motion. So that we don't to make it too confusing. Yeah, oh, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If we wait until you get to that. It'd be easy point. for us because we're used to it. No, but yeah, it would be too. Um, so you would do that, Chris? You would change the order yeah. of those? Yeah. Okay. So basically that's still what changes. Yeah. 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 Okay. And then the if you did reverse the order, you would first you'd authorize the district. That's just a yes or no. And then to establish provisions for the payment, there would have to be I mean there would uh, you know, I would move to <coughs> Uh, I'm not sure what the wording would be. Yeah. Like, what, what I'll, provisions me, I'll, I'll, establishing? I'll ask, I can ask Chris Leopold for the, if he's got any suggestions for wording, but I think it's really, uh, I move that the Washington Central Unified Union School District pay any expenses occurred at a time and that those before July 1st to vendors that provided service. Mm -hmm. That's where I would, that, how I would do that one. Uh, the first one is the borrow, you know, as you're going to reverse it, Chris, which makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. You know, we already, that's where the money's coming from. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because, I mean, our auditors already told us in meeting with us, we have to, we should need to be tracking these things pretty closely. Yeah. So I hate to be this guy, but I am this guy. We're done. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. Great. Okay. Those were the one ones. Okay, well, I'll um, I appreciate the opportunity to go through Yeah, this is great. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, and I will um, just let you know um, when I hear from um, Gus for sure. And if you have any thoughts about that, or should I just let you know that? Sure. Okay. Okay. Will you let me know if Gus is going to do it or not? Uh, yeah, so we, we, we will. We can have a conversation about that. So given that um, Kari has to leave at 820, mm -hmm. and I would like to get his uh, thoughts or opinions on our um, 
candidates in a decision about you know which consultant we go with. Um, I guess I would propose that we uh, move into executive session so that we can have that discussion. Mm -hmm. right. I'll second. make a motion. Yes. And, and move to go into executive session at 809. Four personnel issues. Okay. Second. Yeah, are you going to move it? Yes. All, right. all, all in favor? Yes. Yeah, right. right. So we come out of executive session at 821. And is there a motion? I'll make a motion to hire Mark Andrews as the superintendent search consultant. A second. A second. Is there any discussion? Thank um, you. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. Okay. I'll stay all night. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. And, uh, and let's see if we can march through. Uh, so I offered to, to meet next week. I'll, I'll be traveling from Tuesday on. So. Yeah. So the contingency planning is essentially speaking to members of the leadership team who have their superintendent licenses about um, you know possible contingencies as this um, unfolds. Uh, as Kari mentioned, uh, he spoke to them and set up a time, but he'll be away. So Floor and I are. Uh, next Wednesday, I believe. Is that right? Yeah, next Wednesday is 10. Right. But you're also going to schedule a meeting to meet with Mark. Is that, and you mentioned, yeah. it seems like. Yeah, we well, we can, we can talk about that next. We've got to talk about when our next executive committee meeting is going to be, yeah. and it could be Monday. So we, uh, we will want to talk about that too. Well, right. it can't be Monday, isn't it? This is district yeah. organization. Yeah. 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 Unless it's after Unless the district. Well, or before or after. Yeah, after, after the yeah. Well, after yeah. is going to be the transition. The other, thing, the other thing the committee could do would be to designate a couple of people to work with Mark mm -hmm. on, on the posting specifically. So that, and just say authorize them to post it even. Yep. Um, yep. And then we could move yep. forward that way as well. I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. All right, thanks everyone. Good night. So that's, Good pretty, night. Good that's pretty much it on 2.3. Uh, 2.5 is the last day of school. Right, so as you all know, we had a snow day last Friday. Yeah, I want to really thank Paul of the Middlesex. Um, he really was helpful in that. Um, the, right now, currently, the last day for elementary schools, if we do 180 days, is June 21st, a Friday. And for U32, because they're making up a day this Friday, would be June 20, Monday, June 24th. Um, I was working with the Labor Management Committee and talking with them. Uh, I have not I've talked briefly, many different conversations, but uh, with the leadership team, but not on a whole, because we're, we usually try to wait till about April vacation because there has been snow and there's snow in the forecast for this Friday. Mm -hmm. So I usually try not to wait to then the last day. <clears throat> but I wanted to bring it to all of you because I knew if I started with every local board, once I say it, one place, one board approves what we're doing, it's just better to have it all in uniformity. So I would recommend to you that the last day of school for U32 be on the 21st, so it'll be one loss of student days. We still keep 190 teacher days. That's the contract that they're under. And that you move the elementary to Thursday, the 20th, so they have 179 days. Um, we're allowed to. Have one day short. You are allowed to have a hundred. You must by state statute you have 175 days. Oh, oh, oh. okay. So we're just going against our own, our own, our own 180 that we do. So there's nothing uh, through state law that's requiring that you need to go 180. Is there any? Um, it's an equity thing, equity issue for the teachers. So the teach, we need to keep them at 190. So they're going to come. Oh, they're going to have 190. They're going to have 190 days. So otherwise, we get into payroll issues and all that. So they're still going to. They're going that way. They would each have two in-service days. We had to move one for either due. This is all due to the water main breaks that happened in yeah. Montpelier. So we were down quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, the the associations asked me to look at. The, one of the water main days, they were here for half the day. The staff was not the, and yeah. to look and give them that as one of the in-service days. I said to them, I'm, I'm thinking I'm kind of in favor of that, but we're going to talk about the workload and what they did for work that day. You, in terms of family and daycare, yeah, it seems to me keeping the 
elementary kids on the same day as the high school kids? So, because that's where the so problem what, arises. So we had that conversation in labor yeah. management, and they said, remember, those last three or four days were in exams. Were what? We're in exams at U32. So that the kids, uh, the high school kids are, some are there and some aren't there. I know the middle school doesn't have exams. So I'm fine going both the same day. I'm just. Yeah, that's yeah. what I think I would yeah. do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just yeah. because yeah. that, that's, it's, that's fine. The beauty you know, you know, you know, Yeah, you know, okay. Fields, I actually yeah. bring it to you for okay. okay. that way. Yeah. Just yeah. for practical purposes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so we'll say the 21st. 21st, 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 21st. make. I, I I'll, I'll move that we amend the school calendar this year so that uh, school for um, our entire supervisory union ends on Friday, June 21. Is there a second? I'll second. Is there any discussion? And that's an anonymous motion, so if it gets out to the ground, <laughs> <laughs> we don't know who said it. We don't see you. We don't that's see you. No, David. No, David. No, David. <laughs> no discussion really of the nuances of what we were doing. I think we got to put in all caps and address. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. well. Just, Just your address. On me. <laughs> all point <laughs> bulletin. <laughs> Is there any discussion? The motion? Yeah. Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. So before we get to the last item on our agenda, which will be executive session so that we can let people go, um, when do we want to schedule our next committee meeting? Is, is it going to be for the pur fourth purpose? That is a good question. Yeah. Um, I guess if we designate uh, a couple of representatives mm -hmm. to work with Mark on getting uh, a posting, together and out if the committee is comfortable with that, uh, then it wouldn't be necessary for us to meet immediately, I think, um, except possibly for the purposes of reviewing other meetings and conversations that might happen, I suppose, okay. and also to discuss communication. I mean, I can think of reasons why right. we might want to, you know, um, so. No, then I would, I would Okay, so if we designate the several people for work with Mark, um, it would be would, would necessarily be a warm meeting if it's more. How, what's the quorum number four, that we have to worry about? Four, so, so, we, seconds, so it should be three, three right. then to avoid um, quorum issues uh, or meeting I, issues. I would, I, would su I would suggest. I mean, he was what he, what he was saying is he wants a board liaison, so we should we might want to determine who that is. Yeah. Um, I think two is probably enough. Unless you feel like there's some, I think oh, we would, could have I, I would say three. I would yeah. go to the max that that okay. people are able to. Yeah, I was saying that at least have a backup so that. Yeah, for schedule if reasons. It might, might be impossible for three to meet, but certainly two can. Right. Okay. And all, and all three should be there in the right. event that way. If it's someone isn't, yes, yeah. yeah. yeah, we're about to speak. Well, I mean, I already, I, I can't meet on Monday, so that if there's a sense of urgency about sort of meeting with Mark right away to uh, move things forward on that day, I, I'm not available, so. Um, so you're going to be at the kitchen meeting, right? Yeah. I'll be there, but I'm just saying during the day, I, work, I have to be down on Brattleboro for right. work, work meetings. Yeah. And, so. but, but let's do the first of it. So like, you can be the board liaison one, since you the chair, you guys feel comfortable mm -hmm. with that. And then get, two, you're suggesting mm -hmm. two other people yeah. that yeah. would, that would work. You know, I would like to be part of that group. It, it, I would like to sure. be part of that group before. It, but you know, that kind of depends also, uh, again, when the meeting, the get togethers would occur. If they're occurring like in the morning, I can do it later in the afternoon, I can midday just doesn't work for me. So I would defer to what works best for everybody in that. that I can talk to Mark. My schedule is pretty flexible usually. And yeah. I also have video conference um, <coughs> capacity that works really well and is easy to mm -hmm. use. I, I would like to be part of that group too, but I also, you know, there's more voices here. Uh, no, and, I, I uh, go ahead with Chris and Matthew, and he was fine with me. Are you okay with that? Mm -hmm. Would you like to be part of that? Yeah. You guys, I'm really comfortable with all the kind of you in that. Okay. Uh, yeah, all of, that's a good team. I'm fine with being a liaison informally, and I think that requires a motion, but I think if we're going to designate three people to actually I think it should be one person. I'll, I'll move that, that, that we have, yeah. that we have um, Chris and Floor and Matthew 
work with Mark and that Matthew be the official liaison. Or maybe we don't need that part. It's okay. I think it's to, to uh, prepare and post. Uh, oh, oh, you want me to be more specific? Yeah. To prepare and post um, a superintendent op opening for his interim superintendent. Okay. I just want to check with the recorder. I'm sorry, I forgot your name. <laughs> Tiffany. 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 Okay. Is that so? This, this is what I have. A uh, motion to have Chris, Laura, Matthew work with Mark and Matthew be the official li liaison to prepare and post superintendent opening for interim superintendent. You can that take out, yeah. I think okay. you can take out the part of the liaison. Yeah, take, the take, take out the liaison. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think it's fine for me just to do that. As a and I was yeah. just yeah. Yeah. without objection. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, Uh, well, that well, one of these things that he lists that we need to do is essential qualifications. Will that be, it's be part of that? That will be part of that. For okay. Sure. I just was kind of okay. Yeah. I'm good. Is there a second to the motion? I'll second. I can't because I'm I'm just wondering. So. Uh -huh. Vera seconded it. Yeah. Any uh, dis further discussion of the motion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Abstentions. Thank you very much. Uh, still, one with the next meeting of the executive committee be, though. <laughs> so, uh, do we want to set a date and a time? Should we do it next Thursday again? So it doesn't. So, okay, because you're saying you can't do it Monday, or should? Well, we couldn't do it Monday anyway. But uh, yeah. what needs to be done? I mean, do we do will the board? Will they need to? You want? We would need to. <laughs> well, the, to the be following week is the break week. I don't know if people have plans to be away or. My yeah, what was the suggestion? Yeah. Go ahead. Once you get that added up, you've got probably two to th three weeks. And I think where you're going to want to, the thing you want to do is, I think, you're going to want to decide from this board and from the SU board what information do you need to gather, i.e., do you need to, do you want any input session, or do you want to just do a survey? And I think with the time you have, it may just be a survey, and do you want something with a leadership team? I, mean, I think that's like that's about as far as you can go mm -hmm. with the time constraints, and you know Mark is being pretty worried yeah. about that. Yeah. Right. And so the next time you, you want to think about gathering, my suggestion is coming back from April break as a as a as a committee. We have a lot of board meetings going on that week, but I think we can figure something out. Uh, the transition board, they have one piece of work they have to do next week, which is get a warrant. If there's an Australian ballot. Well, either way, they need to get a warning posted for an annual meeting, mm -hmm. whatever that is. And that's mm -hmm. essentially, and I'm hoping Monday night, I know Matthew emailed the transition board member saying, hopefully Monday night that can be done after the district organization, assuming the district organization Good plan. goes forward, because we want to get that thing, so people can get petitions if it's Australian, or people can call yeah. about it as soon as possible. Should we talk to Mark, I mean, to see if there's any house cleaning? That we can do next week, or even with a partial. Yeah, I think that's one thing. Matt, Matt, I will. Oh, Matt, Matt, you should reach out to him. I'll, I'll write. I would. Yeah. I'll write to him tonight, and I will likely talk to him tomorrow. Yeah. So, you know, if there's some reason why there's a, it yeah. seems like we need to call a meeting sooner, I'll just let people know and we'll yeah. try to figure it out. My my, my piece is just I'm just thinking of general search mm -hmm. timelines and how they work. That first, once you get it posted, you yeah, have two to three sense. weeks. Things kind of sit, but you want to be gathering. Who's your committee, and mm -hmm. what are the attributes you want to be looking for? Yeah, well, that's what I mean. And that can happen that week coming back. Yeah, we'll get into, I would think, and Mark will advise you on that. But I'm just, we're just running principal one right now, so yeah. it's kind of the same idea. It's just yeah. where do you put the, the dates? Well, I think prior to that, if we can, you know, it's getting that leadership team feedback, all of those pieces, we have that before going into that mm -hmm. meeting. I mean, it strikes me that the more we have early, the better. I mean, I would leave. I would. See what Mark says mm -hmm. in terms of what. Yeah, I'll chat with him. He thinks so. I, I got the general impression from Mark that he wanted to meet with the leadership team with maybe one or two of us rather than the leadership team and our whole mm -hmm. executive board. So, so we'll so, that. yeah, we'll, 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 we can address that. Out, but yeah, uh, okay. the, I just want to see if we can set a date while yeah. we're here. Um, Looking at this, Matthew. And it looks like the, Which I don't the have in front of me, by yeah. The way. So it looks like the only day that there's so it'd be like the 26th, which is a Friday. Let's 
So if we look at right after <coughs> vacation, there's a meeting every day, except this is a fun schedule. Yeah, Berlin so special election. Oh, yeah. So the twenty third is actually just the Berlin yeah. special election. There's That's not, Australian ballot. That's, That's Australian ballot. It's not a meeting. Not a meeting. So yeah. what? Okay. What about Tuesday the twenty third? Are people mm -hmm. that day? Okay. Here. But If you can be here, Chris, I believe, and if people are also available, we could actually start meeting a little earlier. Because I think it was for Mary Lynn, who is coming from down south. Oh, for six? 5.30, I have to meet 5.30. Does 5.30 work for everybody? Yeah. Otherwise? Yeah, okay. The 23rd. Uh, so the only thing left on our uh, agenda is to have an executive session for a staffing issue. Mm -hmm. And so if we uh, are ready, if there's no other business, then mm -hmm. we can... And we're going to do the second session at 8.37 for the personnel issue. For staffing issue. I'll second. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.